Tone color. Could you tell what color I was thinking? How about this one? What color I was thinking? Was it a color? How about this one? You won't be able to guess. The first solo, I was thinking of my dear grandfather, Max Bolter. He sat in a chair, a comfortable chair, for the last 25 years of his life and watched TV. He was happy, but he had an inner sadness. Always pleasant to us grandkids. And that solo reminded me of him. And every time I played it, in 1996, when I was playing principal in the BSO, I ran, well, Ron Barron took sabbatical. Um, I thought of him. And then the other solo, I thought of my other grandfather, Herman Naren. He was a self-taught violinist. You've heard me speak about him before. But for some reason, that solo reminded me of him standing next to Evergreens in his native Poland in the wintertime. That feeling of green against the white backdrop and this slight melancholiness. And the other solo, the one in the first movement that dovetails with the second trombone, I was thinking of my own will and determination in my life. To always go forward in the midst of all odds with what I believe. Did they affect the tone color? Of course they did. In fact, that's the only thing that brought all the overlays together is when I thought about my grandfather. And what I mean about the overlays is the technical aspect, the robotic systems, my choice and what to do with the robotic system, what direction to steer it in, and the music. But the characters, for me, just put all of that together. Some people might have to think, well, if I'm going to think about my grandfather, maybe I'll need a short articulation because he was very articulate and um, a little bit um, lean with his words, um, but right to the point. And so someone would get very technical in trying to find what would express the character. Terrific, if that's what you need to do. Everyone's different. Sometimes, if I just think the character of the music, everything falls in place. And if it doesn't, then I'm on my search to find out what I need to do to have it happen. What technique do I need to have that character portrayed? But I never forget about the character. Now this gets difficult sometimes when people are, are in, really in the development stages of playing, no matter what that development stage might be, elementary school, high school, college for the serious player. And the serious player, of course, doesn't start in college. You could start at age nine, like I was. We get very involved in technique. Um, but I always, you know, wanted to have the other thing because I was surrounded by people who used music for other things, not just mastery of a skill. So tone color is, the, is a cloak 
It's like clothing. It can help express the character, the inner spirit of a person's makeup, their personality, their persona, or perhaps the part of them that isn't so seen in the world. So tone color, that was one way that I brought out those various colors of those pieces by thinking of those various people. Now, if I was going to play this simple etude for you, um, number, oh, what is it called? Number 40, no, number 59 from Pasquale Bona's Rhythmical Articulation. I'll think of an open-sounding French horn, the kind I used to listen to growing up. They didn't have a lot of vibrato or any, but there was this soaring, haunting, free quality. <laughs> the same thing. What if I thought about a military trumpet player? There's different kinds of romantic cellists, different kinds of military trumpet players, and I was just connecting to basic, simple associations in my mind with those things that I played. But each one affected my tone color. And one of my points here is sometimes when we've, we've exhausted our technique, you know, worked on all our different vibratos, worked on our different articulations, worked on our different syllables to create different shapes of sound, we realize those are just materials. And they need to have a reason to be used. And that reason is to express the spirit of their character or the character of the music. So we have technique we have the essence of the music, of spirit and character. And then we have the person who's playing, and they have to try to make those sound real. Try to make them sound real. The way to do that is to connect to something that is real for you. Then it'll sound genuine. And sometimes, let's face it, there's certain musics that we're going to play that require certain timbral changes, rhythmic nuances that really we don't maybe have a personal reference for. And we gotta search for it. We gotta find it somehow. We gotta track it down. Build some relationship with it. So it can be real for us. And eventually you'll find a spot that you'll Feel a genuineness towards the subject, even if it's new. You know, I didn't have a relationship with rabbits until we got pet rabbits. And they're incredible. Each one of the five rabbits we've had, six now, can't remember, five, been totally different. It's the same thing with tone colors. It's the same thing if you put your different emotions through your horn. It'll express different things. Go with what's real in you. 